Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today I want to do a special Complete Run Madness because the madness here is the Complete Run's only 10 issues. So I think I need to do some kind of branding for these micro runs, but very excited to bring to you my Complete Run of Son of Tomahawk. Now, uh, this starts with issue 131, Tomahawk. Quick background if you're not familiar with the series Tomahawk. Now, the series Tomahawk originally began in the pages of Star Spangled Comics. And Tomahawk is a character who's sort of like a, a Daniel Boone sort of figure with a coonskin cap who fights during the Revolutionary War. So he's fighting against the British, but there's also uh, stuff with the Native Americans both on their side and against them. And uh, so there's it's got um, a frontier feel to it, a lot of frontier combat. And uh, that proved popular enough to eventually knock Robin out of that book and get Tomahawk his own series. So that debuted, I think, around 1950, of course, with the um, Davy Crockett stuff being so popular in the 50s. Tomahawk was really popular. Uh, by the late 50s, it has sort of turned into this sort of goofy um, sci-fi tinge stuff like everything else like there'll be giant gorillas and stuff like that uh just like there was in like say issues of black hawk or batman or something like that um and so the series sort of limped along late 60s uh they put neil adams on the covers and it started to have i don't know if it really had a revival but um for modern day collectors it starts to definitely become more interesting as it looks more and more um modern some great neil adams covers right towards the end of the run of tomahawk that came to an end with 130 because here with 131 in a desperate last ditch attempt to save the series they changed the title to son of tomahawk and the series fast forwarded a number of years uh so instead of being taking place during the revolutionary war it's in like the 1820s maybe it's hard to tell um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And the series, instead of focusing on Tomahawk, it focuses on his son, Hawk. Hawk, son of Tomahawk. And that's Hawk there. And the thing with Hawk is basically Tomahawk um, has is much older now. Um, he has married a Native American woman, and so his children um, are mixed race. And that actually fuels a lot of the drama in these stories um, because these stories have a couple interesting features to them first of all as i just started to allude to um they play fast and loose with what time period they're in because there's lots of elements of the old west stories that really should be taking place in the 1850s 1860s 1870s 1880s but they're not they're taking place decades earlier than they should in terms of some of those elements so you get a weird thing where it's a it feels like the comic is a western when it really isn't quite it now the characters do move west of where they were during the revolutionary war but really they're only in the middle of the country so anyway it, it's not very historically accurate um in kind of any sense but what it is is very uh, representative of the time it was made in so these books are coming out around 1970 71 um, you can see it's, a 15, it's the 15 cent era at the beginning of the run. And then by the end, we're in the big 52 cent era. So <clears throat> uh, 71, 72, tail, just beginning of 72. And um, a lot of these stories have uh, a lot of um, discussion of uh, race relations. There's a lot of stuff in here that's really speaking to what's happening in the country in 1970 when these are coming out and not what's happening in 1820 when these stories should be taking place. Um, and so we have that pretty much right on the cover here. Um, now, there's a lot of reasons to collect this run, and one of the big ones is that Joe Kubert does all the covers. I think Kubert was actually the editor of this series as well, although I'm not sure about that. A lot of the stories by Robert Conagher and uh, we get um, 
Covers by Kubert, but interiors by Frank Thorne coming over to comics. Now, uh, I've mentioned this in a previous video. I always thought Frank Thorne was a younger person because, you know, he's known for his work in the 70s. But actually, by the time he took over Tomahawk, he was already 40 years old and had been doing a lot in comic strips in the 50s and 60s. Uh, but he makes, starts making his name in comics here, and he has a great, great style um, particularly, like, I love this style he has in these early books, which is similar to what he has later, but Frank Thorne's work is really interesting to me because it's kind of like a mix of Joe Kubert and, um, I want to say Alex Toth, but it's really, um, it's really closer to some Archie artists in a weird way. I know that sounds crazy, but what I mean is, as he has the same sort of He's got the sketchiness that he gets from Kubert, um, and but he and he's got this uh, this uh, light and shadow and um, a sense of design like Alex Toth, where it's very much like uh, this sort of use of blacks and um, stuff like that. But there's a there's also a cartoony element that neither of those artists really have. I mean, when you think of Kubert, the angularity, you don't really think of it being um, cartoony. And yet, uh, Frank Thorne somehow merges um, those things. Um, it's like, it's almost closer to Harry Lucy, really, than to Alex Toth. So it's a, it's a really compelling mix um, of influences and styles and Frank Thorne's work is just great. The covers are great. So this is the first issue. Let me just go through all of them here. Um, the series, uh, only ran for 10 issues before it was canceled. Um, so here's number 132, the second issue. And you can see, um, there's a lot of language like that, which of course we wouldn't really use now because it's, it's, uh, inappropriate. Um, but uh, there's a lot of that on these covers. We're going to see that particular slur used on um, a lot of these covers. So here's 133. Great Kubert covers. Um, 134, another great Kubert cover. I love, like... Just the, the use of light and shadow. The silhouetted fig gunfighter with the long shadow. I love this design era. They're trying to figure out their own version of the Marvel Corner Box. And this is basically what they've come up with. This is going to shrink and then eventually disappear in a lot of titles. But I love this late 15 cent era. Just before they go into the 48 big pages. Um, I love the design across the across the DC lines. It's, it's one of my favorite periods for DC covers. Is this like nineteen seventy to seventy two is just great. Um, One thirty five. Love the the coloring here with the the background figures and stuff. One thirty six. Here's a story specifically about um, slavery. He's no dog, chair, or piece of dirt. You can't have him. He's my property. And again, we get this sort of um, wash effect with the monotone background figure. This is, we're into the, the 25 cent era here. Here's probably the best cover in the run, I think. Absolutely great, great, great cover 137 with the bear is about to attack the woman. Hold your breath as Tomahawk lives through the night of the knife. Tremendous covers, great interior art, interesting stories. Here we have 138, a different kind of Christmas story. Again, we have our, our main characters have been captured. They're tied up. Um, we get a cross. 139. If you want to leave this way, welcome to our town. 
And then finally, 140, last issue of the series, but it's the only issue with the new logo. So great new logo, massive improvement on the previous logos. Uh, unfortunately, it's too, way too late because this is the last issue into the 52 big pages era. Uh, my favorite era for, for cover design for any company is DC's 52 big pages. They have a lot of great logos. They have great looking books, great looking covers. Um, I won't let you take me away from Brave Bear. I am his wife. You must come back. You're a white woman. Uh, so anyway, really underrated run. Um, I know that some of you also collect this. Uh, this run is so great. Um, again, I can't say enough about the the interior artwork, the cover artwork. The stories are really interesting. Again, looking at um, using this period and these characters as a way to examine racist issues at the time when these are, these are coming out. They also do some really interesting things with the with characters from Tomahawk um, because some of the supporting characters are brought in and it's like, you know, 40, 50 years later after their original series ended, now they're old and, and um, some of them get killed in the series. And uh, so really doing some interesting stuff with the title, using the continuity in unexpected and interesting ways. Um, but just... Uh, just a, a really underrated little gem of a series. Only 10 issues. Um, usually you can find them pretty cheap. I got almost the whole run for a dollar each. Um, I did end up getting, I spent a little bit more on a couple of them. Um, I think there was, I think I got six of them for, for a dollar each. And then the most I paid for any of them was, was probably, um, you know, this is the first issue here where the first appearance of Hawk is, um, my copy is, is nice. It's probably a seven or so, 7.5 maybe, but, um, I think I paid $10 for it. So, uh, cheap series worth tracking down and, um, and that's it. So let me know what you think about, uh, Hawk, son of Tomahawk in this series with the, with the, all the, all the stuff to recommend for it. Um, it's too bad. I, I, I have a feeling and I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like if this had been able to hang on a little longer, um, it might've been able to survive because this is, this is coming out right at the same time. This is being canceled at the same time that Jonah Hex is first appearing. And if we get a little bit of that momentum where DC has a little bit of a line of these Western comics, I think Tomahawk, Son of Tomahawk could have fit in in an interesting way with um, books like Weird Western and later Jonah Hex and Scalp Hunter and stuff like that. I think it could have been an interesting addition to those, but it just didn't last quite long enough to do that. So let me know what you think, uh, and I'll see you next time.